Welcome to A Quest For Metal. Today we're doing a new album ranking and it's one of the biggest, one of the first, well, the first metal band of all time, Black Sabbath. You all know them, you should know them, and you probably love them. Um, but yeah, we're going to rank them from my least favourite to my favourite and spoiler alert, my list isn't going to be like yours. Same as all these lists, you've got to do that fucking intro thing. Everyone has to do like a disclaimer saying like, you know, Sorry if my picks are, are wrong to yours, but it's all fucking opinions, you know. My list is 100% fucking right, because it's my channel, and if you have any arguments with this list, go fuck yourself. So this is going to be a fairly controversial one for one of the classic albums that I really fucking hate. And none of you guessed it on the community post when I asked, which Sabbath album, classic one, do I hate? None of you guessed it. You kept saying Paranoid because it's overrated, but I'm not going to hate something just because it's overrated, you know? That doesn't mean it's bad. Metallica's Black album's overrated. It's not bad. I still enjoy it. But let's stop blabbering and get into the meat and the gravy of the list, and let's start with my least favourite. So coming in last, seventh star. Glenn Hughes on the vocals in this one. It's not that good. Uh, I don't think it's that good. It feels like stadium rock. Like the songs... They feel rocky, they don't feel metal. Like, this doesn't feel like a metal album. It feels so different and distant to Black Sabbath that it just doesn't feel like a Black Sabbath album. And that's one of the reasons I don't like it, and it's one of the reasons I don't like my next pick as well. Uh, but yeah, this one, his vocals, I don't like. I just don't like his vocals. Um, yeah, he's influential, and so is my next pick, but... Yeah, I mean, what can I say? I, I don't like it. Music of subjective. It, it's coming in last... Uh, but let's move on to the next one, Born Again, Ian Gillen on vocals, you know, both from Deep Purple. Again, not really a fan of the vocals. This album's so goddamn weird, not just because of the album cover, but the music itself is so weird. Again, it doesn't sound like Sabbath at all, there's no dark atmosphere, there's no... It's not like Dio era where it's like epic anthemic choruses where you just want to scream your lungs out, I fucking love Dio, or Ozzy era where it's like dark and depressing, and dreary, and everything you want from Doom. Uh, this is just experimental and weird, and there's another album that I hate, which will get me loads of flack, because it's experimental. Some people call it a masterpiece. I Masterpiece of shit. But let's talk about this one. Uh, yeah, the vocals mainly kill it for me. The experimentation is there, but I don't think any of the songs hit. This and the Glenn Hughes one, I'm never going to go back to. Never going to go back to. I don't like this style of rock, uh, I like the metal albums, so let's fucking move on. Next up, Forbidden. Everyone shits on this one, but I'll give it some fucking credit. I'll give it some credit, it has Tony Martin on the vocals, and he's a fucking fantastic vocalist. His era is underrated as hell, but I gotta kinda agree with the masses, this album is kinda disjointed, kinda weird. There's rap in it, Ice T's on the first song. What is going on? This just feels... it's just bad songwriting. Bad songwriting. It's not fun to listen to, I don't get any enjoyment out of listening to this one. Which is a shame, because I love all the other Tony Martin. I love all his other albums, but this one falls short, and it's just jumbled, and it's just a fucking mess. The other two is personal picks, I don't like them because I don't like the vocalists, and the direction they were going. This one is like, this one's like the worst, because it's just fucking bad. And, yeah, fuck this album. So... Yeah, this is going to get me loads of shit. This is the classic album I fucking hate. I do not like this one a single goddamn bit. I understand they were in a castle, creative juices were flowing low, and then they came up with this, and they're like, oh, the riffs are there. And I'm like, yeah, the riffs are there, but the sound in the album sounds fucking hollow. Like, the songs sound limp. All the songs sound limp. That's the word for this album. It's a limp album. It sounds like stonery, stone, like psychedelic music. It, they experimented, and I, for most people, it worked. For most people, they love the experimentation on this album. They say it's the best Sabbath album. I've seen loads of people saying it's the best Sabbath album. Going f back for everything, I hate every single song on this album. Like, they all sound like fucking cream or like Jefferson Aeroplane and, and like just take some acid and stuff. Listen, maybe that's why I don't like it because I'm not high. 
maybe if I was high, I'd enjoy this album. But I think Sabbath just did a much better job with like Master of Reality, where it's like doomy, dreary, and like, ugh. and they did a much better job with experimentation with sabotage. Well, I can actually understand what fucking Ozzy's saying because on this one, he sound the vocals are so goddamn shit. The vocals are so low in the mix. You can't understand what he's saying. The mi the mix is fucking awful. The sound is awful. Uh, it just sounds like a psychedelic trip. The every song sounds like that. Even Sabbath, Buddy Sabbath, with that interesting riff, which I wish I loved that song, but then it goes fucking weird in the middle. I don't like any songs off this album. This is a zero for me. Which is gonna trigger shitloads of people, and it'll be funny. But yeah, this is just my opinion. You know, fuck it, just some loser on the internet. What the fuck do I know? But yeah, don't like this one. Much better albums. Much better albums like this one, Dehumanizer, Ronnie James Dio. This is the worst Ronnie James Dio album, but it's miles better than the Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, and it's miles better than the other shit that I just mentioned. Um, this onwards. I really enjoy the albums. Yeah, so from this album onwards, I really enjoy the albums. Those couple, those four, I'm never listening to again. Fuck those albums. This onwards, I really enjoy. This just falls short, though, because the songwriting is a bit subpar compared to Mob Rules and compared to Heaven and Hell. Like, the songwriting just isn't there. It feels chaotic, a lot of the songs, but I'll give it credit for being, like, the heaviest, one of the heaviest Black Sabbath albums, and I still jam it. I still love it. But is it going to be higher than Mob Rules in Heaven and Hell? Fuck off, is it? No, it isn't. It's not even close. But still a fun album. Still enjoy it. Still jam it. Dio is one of the best vocalists in metal, if not the best. So, got to give some love to Dehumanizer, even though it is kind of low. Next up, Cross Purposes. Some people hate this one as well. Um, for stupid reasons. They say, like, oh, Tony Martin kind of made the band stale, blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. He is an amazing vocalist. He brings like a power metal vibe to the band and I love power metal. In fact, you know, I prefer like Blind Guardian and stuff to, to uh, Sabbath. <laughs> People are gonna shit on me for this. But, and Iced Earth, I love that shit. Power metal is amazing. And his era, oh, it's so good. It's so good, it feels power metal. That's why I love Dio as well. Um, but yeah, this, this album falls short again because the first half is fantastic, full killer first half, and then it kind of drags, gets a bit samey, it's not quite as good as like the other Tony Martin era albums, especially not as good as Headless Cross, this kind of falls short because it's half and half for me, first half amazing, second half drags a bit, so yeah, go in here. Never Say Die is next, people shit on this one as well, fuck them, this is fucking fantastic, it's a bit poppy, it's a bit jazzy, but... The songs are catchy as hell. The title track is fucking amazing. Johnny Blaze. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Oh, Johnny Blade. It's fucking amazing. I love that song. Um, I love all the songs on this album. You know, this is a fantastic album from start to finish. Bit poppy. Who cares? You know, it's fun. It's a fun album. At least I can hear what's going on on, like, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. <laughs> like, at least it's not weird psychedelic shit. It's interesting, fun, catchy boobity boop pop songs, jazzy shit, whatever. The experimentation on this one, pretty good. You know, I enjoy it a lot more. What can I say? You know, you might hate it. I don't really fucking care. I'm going to give it some love. Great goddamn album. Next up, Technical Ecstasy. Again, the interesting songwriting, interesting songs on this one, the progressive nature of it, it all comes to fruition. And this album is really fucking good. Underrated as hell, you know, this and Sabotage and stuff, this is the kind of progressive Sabbath that I love. Yeah, this is the kind of progressive Sabbath I love and the experimentation that I love. You know, it sounds chunky, it sounds meaty, it sounds metal. Doesn't sound like Jefferson Airplane, it sounds metal. The other shit is like the Beatles, this is fucking Sabbath. You want it to sound heavy and metal. And sure, this is proggier, but I, st I still think it sounds more metal than... The other one. I'm not going to bash it the entire way through. I'm just, I'll stop bashing it now. But yeah, Technical Ecstasy, underrated as fuck. Love it. Next up, 13, the latest Sabbath album. I'm going to give it loads of love because this is the doomiest album they've ever done. The darkest, just the most evil sounding, aside from Master. I love it. It's a massive return to form from Forbidden, that pile of shit. 
This comes in, saves the day. Saves the goddamn day, because I, I love this one. This is absolutely amazing. The first couple of songs on it, the first three tracks, they're both like, the first two are like eight minutes long or something. Beautiful, beautiful songs. And this album is underrated as fuck. And you, like some boomers are gonna be sat there like, what the fuck is the hot, is the latest one so high? Me, 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 me. I'm not that old. I didn't grow up with Sabbath, yeah. I didn't grow up with them. Um, I, I heard the entire Maiden discography, the entire Priest discography, uh, Death, uh, all black metal bands, power metal bands, before I even heard a single fucking Sabbath album. So, don't take my opinion as fucking fact, you know? Form your own opinions. You can hate my number one. I can hate your number one, and I will hate your number one. So, you know, fuck it. It's fun. See, it's all, it's all in the name of fun. But yeah, this album is dark, eerie, and I fucking love it. Next up, The Eternal Idol. The first album, I think the first album, with uh, Tony Martin on vocals. And oh boy, does he deliver. This album is a work of art. Just like the artwork, it is a work of art. It's anthemic, it's epic. It has all those qualities that I said I liked uh, from Cross Purposes. But all the songs are great. You know, it's amped up to 11. Way better that both halves are good. Uh, I just think he has some better albums, uh, including the next one, Tear, which has kind of like a Norse mythology theme to it, even though they said it's not a concept album, but it has some kind of flares like that, and I fell in love with this album. As soon as I pressed play on the first song, I was like, this is heavy as fuck, this is catchy as hell, the rhythm in this, the riffs in these songs, his vocals are operatic, almost Dio-esque vocals, oh, fit the band so well, fit the band so well. And this doesn't get talked about enough. People shit on this album um, again. But I'm going to give it some love. Tear. Beautiful album. One of my favourites. Next up, Paranoid. It's Paranoid. A beautiful album. I'm not going to hate on this. Sure, it's overplayed. I don't think it's overrated. There's a difference. There's overplayed and there's overrated. This is overplayed. Uh, but it has... The songs are amazing. Starting off with War Pigs. What the fuck? Come on, that's the, one of the best Sabbath songs ever. You know, one of the best ever. Iron Man can get a bit meh, but I still think it's a great song. But Paranoid, the title track, oh, that's flawless as well. This this album has all the hits, all the classics, and I, I'm going to give it some love as well. You know, fuck it. It's a great album. Let's go in here. Next up, Volume 4. I think this is a bit better. Minus one song. Don't like changes. Uh, it's a bit sappy. <laughs> it's a bit too sappy. Uh, every other song, though, fucking hits. This came right before Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. I'm gonna... St I need to stop shitting on that. But it came right before it, but the sound is so much better. The sound in Volume 4 is so much better. League's better than that. Like, League's better. It feels metal. It feels heavy. Like, sure, it's a bit catchier. It's a bit less weird. I'm filtered by that album. You can tell. I'm filtered and triggered by that album. Um, but this album just has so many good fucking amazing riffs, amazing songs on, and it's a classic. Some people have this one, and I'm like, good for you. This is a great album. I love it to bits, but there's so many good Black Sabbath albums. As I said, from Dehumanizer onwards, I love all of these. So, yeah, this one, another great one. Next up, Black Sabbath, the um, debut album. This is where metal started. Gotta give it some love, and not giving it just love because it's where it started. The songs fucking kick ass. The title track, one of the best Sabbath songs ever. You know? That is just, oh. Like, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. The covers on it, sure there is some cover songs on it, but the cover songs are fucking amazing as well. And this is a bit more bleasy hard rock than metal, but at the same time, no, fuck you if you say that. It is metal. This is the first metal album. Yeah. Argue that Paranoid is, whatever. This is where it started. Gotta give it some love, and every time I put it on, I play it more than Paranoid. So it's going higher. It's going fucking higher. Next up, Master of Reality. I was talking about it before, giving it some good praise, and for good bloody reason. It's doomy, it's dark. The soundscape in it is just thick. Thick. Thick as hell. <laughs> and I love it for that, like... Come on, the songs on this Sweet Leaf, starting off with Sweet Leaf, come the hell on. This is Toner 
Doom done right. You know, this is what I like. And I love Doom. Love Doom to bits. And this album is just, is, is the fucking benchmark for Doom. I adore this album. I wanted to put it one, but I keep swapping and changing. It's really hard. You know, rankings album is hard. They have too many good albums. This is a masterpiece, 10 out of 10. But it's just going here. It's going here. I love it to bits. But re-listening, like, the ones where I was like, I want to really listen to that right now. It was kind of this one, but there was a couple of others which snuck in at the end. So we'll get to them. Mob Rules is next. You know I love Dio. Of course Dio's gonna be high. I fucking love that power metal shit. I love his vocals the best ever, you know. Sorry Aussie, but Dio's vocals are fucking better. Um, yeah, what can I say? Mob Rules, the, the song as well, holy crap, that catchy as hell. This is like blood pumping Dio kind of album. Not quite as heavy as Dehumanizer, but the songwriting is way better, way better. Underrated as fuck. People dismiss it because it's not Aussie. Fuck them. They can go die in a hole. But I love it. I'll give it some fucking love. I'm putting it as number four, as the number four best Sabbath album. And I want to re-listen to it right now. So top three. Top goddamn three. Number three, Headless Cross, Tony Martin. Holy shit. When I first heard it, this is the first Tony Martin album I heard, and I was blown away. I was like, is that Dio? I was like, his singing is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the title track when it kicks off and he's singing Headless Cross, I'm not gonna start singing. I don't wanna don't want your ears to bleed. Um yeah, I fell in love. His vocals are beautiful. You know, his vocals are beautiful. And this album is just more interesting than all the other albums he's done. Songwriting's way better, the choruses are catchier. It's just it's just a fucking fantastic album. One of my favourites by Black Sabbath. You know, one of my favourites. Doesn't get the love it deserves. I'm going to give it some love. Beautiful album. Number three. So number two. Heaven and Hell. This was my number one for a long, long time. Until I really gave another album, like, a really good re-listen. And I was like, fuck me. Every single song is a killer. But let's talk about Heaven and Hell. Every single song is a killer. Dio again. His best, his best performance. His best album, I think, ever. I think it's better than Dio's... You know, Holy Diver, I think it's better than the Rainbow stuff. This is just, this is perfection. This is perfection. I adore this album. Uh, the song Heaven and Hell is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. And he's the best singer ever. And fuck me, this album's flawless. Wanted to put it one. I had it one for a long time, but my taste, like, oh my god, the next album. Let's talk about it. Let's go. I love this album. 10 out of 10. Can't give it enough praise. But my number one Black Sabbath album of all time, Sabotage. This is a recent fucking one for me. Like, I've only recently started to love this album. It is all the things right with the band. It has the dark metal elements from the earlier years. You know, the first album, the second album, blah, blah, blah. It has all those catchy riffs from Naomi, you know and love. But also it has the experimentation from stuff like... Uh, Sabbath and stuff like Technical Ecstasy, but it's just refined in a way and it's just the best of every single world. And also, it has Ozzy's best vocal performance in. This is his best singing performance in this album. He sings clearly, it's with passion, it's like energetic. Like, this is his best, you can't deny that. This is his best album. This is his fucking best album. And the songs on it, the fuck, Megalomania? That nine minute long fucking epic prog heavy metal song. Oh, come on, it's fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. Hole in the Sky, Symptom of the Universe. Come on. This album is a masterpiece. Best of both eras, you know, got the technical, interesting shit without being too weird like Born Again. Um, it's got the heavy stuff, the heavy riffs, the awesome stuff, and it's got some catchy shit like Never Say Die. Um, it's just the best of everything. It's the best of everything. And I adore it. 10 out of 10. Best Sabbath album. Fight me. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this list. Let me know down below your favourite Sabbath albums of all time. What do you think of my list? Do you hate it? Do you love it? What do you think? Let me know and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.